Welcome back then folks to day four of Special Projects Pack number 11 and this is of course a car which I teased a while ago, I think it might have even been in my review for the Renault 4 when it arrived in the game, it is a Dakar replica, the Simpar Renault 4 as it's called which is a four-wheel drive version. Now of course we unfortunately don't have drivetrain swaps in the game and this is really the one occasion where I would love to have drivetrain swaps because making more convincing rally builds would be a lot more fun but this one is an interesting little car because when I was checking out the specs in real life to see how to build it apparently this particular one actually has an Alpine engine swap which makes sense why it would have up around 130 horsepower which is quite a lot for a Renault 4. In fact it's so high that at the moment you can't even get that much horsepower out of this thing even with the turbo. Now Speaking of the turbos, we'll get to that in a second because it doesn't have the high range. And of course, being a rally car, that's not really too much of a surprise. As far as the actual parts, though, you don't even need weight reduction because technically this thing is about 750 kilos or so, or just under in real life. So you could even add some ballast if you want to make it more accurate. The reason why I haven't is to make up for the slight disparity in horsepower. So the fact that we're about 11 horsepower down over what we should be which doesn't sound like much, but for a car at this level, that is quite a big difference. It means that you can at least make up a little bit of that with, you know, 20, 30 kilos less weight. So that's what I've opted to do, but you'll have to decide on a case-by-case -case basis. As far as the club sports section, you want your board-out engine, the high-lift cams, high-compression pistons, the power restrictor, ballast, and obviously I've got the dirt tyres because I'm taking it off-road. If you want to take it on the snow, obviously, obviously you have to change it to that. As far as the semi-race, you want your fully customised ECU, the racing crank, the medium RPM turbo, like I said, you can get more horsepower, so a little bit closer to the real world amount, but a high RPM turbo on a low level rally car is one of the most useless combinations you can have, because you're just not up at that level most of the time, and if you are, especially in a front wheel drive chassis, you're just going to be wheel spinning, so I would say it's kind of a waste of time. We've got the fully customized diff, the fully customized manual transmission. I have opted to increase the rigidity on this one. Being a small, light classic, it does help out. As far as the racing stuff, we've got the polished ports, the balanced tuning on the engine, stroke out engine, of course, the race intercooler, filter, silencer, manifold, pads, and discs. Like I've said before, you could go for slotted, drilled, even Comet ceramics if you wanted to, it doesn't really matter. With the race clutch and flywheel, the race suspension, and then for the extreme stuff, of course, the hydraulic handbrake and the steering angle adapter, both of which are for that extra maneuverability. And then finally, for the ultimate section, we've got the high lift cams S. If I recall correctly, I think that one actually cancels out the other cams, so you'll have to double check that. And the titanium rods and pistons. A lot of those things, I know that the sticklers and the uh, fans of authenticity probably won't like because stuff like, uh, you know, having titanium rods and all that wouldn't be necessarily accurate to real life. But at a certain point, you, you've got to get the car closer to those real world numbers. So if you don't want to have those parts, then of course you'd have to forego the horsepower. But sometimes you've got to make a bit of a sacrifice on realism to get it a bit closer to the specs. So that's what I've opted to do anyway. The point level is still pretty low, 430, and obviously the dirt tyres help out with that as well. As far as the suspension, I've actually increased the ride height. Of course, it's a Dakar vehicle. 190 on the front, 185 on the rear. Sounds like a disparity, but if you take a look at it, it looks about even, pretty much. As far as the rest, I've opted to make this one what I would call like a kangaroo build, as I've done with, I believe, some of the pickups in the past, like the rally raid trucks, and that is that you want it to have that really cool-looking bounce over the jumps, but still be quick. You don't want to sacrifice one for the other or make it too unstable. So we've got one on anti-roll, which probably seems pretty crazy. You could, to be honest, put that a bit higher if you wanted to, but I've got that low for the fun factor. As far as the dampers, that is also as low as it can go. The springs, though, are not super low. They're 1.75, so you've still got that stiffness. As far as the camber, we've got one degree on the front, none on the back. And then for the toe, of course, being a rally build based on a front-wheel drive chassis, you really want to be able to get that tail out. So loads of toe out on the rear, 0.50, and toe in on the front by 0.10. Then as far as the diff, I've gone for triple 10. Personally, I think that works pretty perfectly for this one. You pretty much just go full lock, full throttle most of the time, and it will naturally pull itself into the corner. And then you can just regulate the cornering ability by just backing off the throttle where necessary. But it's very small, it's very light, so it's not exactly difficult to drive, you already know that. As far as the transmission, it does have a lot more horsepower, 
but still it's a mid rpm turbo so you don't want the gears to be too long and it's not like it's a top speed demon anyway so i've just got 180 kilometers an hour which is what 120 miles an hour or less something like that then as far as the restriction the ballast none of that is touched downforce i've got set as low as possible and then over here of course you can see everything which we've fitted and that's it for the build so obviously all that remains is to jump out on the dirt so that you can see what it's like in practice now you'll definitely see it jumping and bouncing around and i swear i didn't plan for this but there's currently a special event for the renault 4 in like the weekly challenges which is an off-road challenge for this one vehicle i will say on that track you can tip it over with with this particular build so you will need to be careful going over a, a curb for example or a uh, abrupt height that's only on one side of the car and of course part of that is because of the stiffer springs and also part is because of the, the ride height naturally it's so high off the ground and possibly as well you might want to refer back to that anti-roll like i said the anti-roll does help out sometimes when it comes to tipping over but even then it's a very high up very lightweight car so it's always going to be a risk of tipping over now in terms of actually using this one and getting the best out of it some of these things i've said before so for rally builds in general i do always recommend using a manual box because the auto is way too sluggish off road for this one you actually need to be a bit counterintuitive to drive it some of you who have used my front wheel drive builds before already know some of this which is basically overcome your brake turn in really sharp keep the power on whereas in another car you would never do that but in a small lightweight front wheel drive chassis that's exactly what you need to do the car will carry you through the corner it just doesn't feel like it's going to because of the heaviness the second thing is and this is crucial to getting better laps out of a lower level car like this one let it over rev you'll sometimes have that tendency to want to change up when you're bouncing off the rev limiter especially if you're going over bumps and jumps or if you're midway through the corner the revs are naturally going higher because you've got it planted to the floor and you'll want to change up from like second to third or third to fourth don't do it let it keep revving until you're out of the corner because otherwise you'll just bog down way too much especially with that mid rpm turbo so ultimately that's the recommendation i would have as far as using it if you do decide to use it i hope you have a ton of fun with it and as a, a bit of reference this is actually about two seconds quicker than the citroen ds rally build that i did so not bad for a little classic ultimately that's it for this build of course check out the rest of the special projects coming out this week and if you haven't already check out the ones which we've already done but that's it for this build i'll see you next time with more and for now thanks for watching